March 7th, we are shifting gears from winter into spring. And we start out with this weather system here in the eastern Great Lakes, extending down the Appalachians. Some showers and thunderstorms out there from Pennsylvania down to Atlanta. And further west, we can see a trail of snow from Wichita to Des Moines and up into the Milwaukee area. And further back to the west, this appears to be a closed low over the Four Corners area. There's a closer look at it, extensive towering cumulus and shallow top cumulonimbus everywhere from Flagstaff, Winslow, up into Durango, Trinidad, and Breckenridge. There's that surface map this afternoon showing a cold front from Akron, Ohio, down to Birmingham, Alabama, and into the western Gulf. Behind it, temperatures in the 30s and 40s, and we can see that this is much warmer than what we've seen with previous cold air outbreaks where temperatures have been in the single digits to the teens. That's yet another sign of the transition from winter into spring. The Pacific segment trailing back pretty far west. That still has yet to cross the surface ridge. And we can see it doing so here in the thermal field. If we bring that up about 24 to 48 hours, there's the warm air advection setting up across Texas and eventually it moves eastward into the southeastern states. Quiet out in the western U.S., evidence of a plateau high in the Snake River Valley and the Great Basin region. And then going out into the Pacific and Alaska, well, we do have definite evidence of more polar air regeneration, 1048 millibars across Yukon, which is higher than we've seen it probably in two or three weeks now. And correspondingly, temperatures are dropping into the below zero range in places like Fairbanks, Old Crow, and Bettles. At least I think that's the name of that town up there along the Brooks Range. And then taking a look out in Canada, a chunk of that cold air coming south. However, temperatures are quite mild, mostly 20s, so just below freezing. Looks like most of the more severe Arctic air is locked up in this inner mountain region. So I'm not too sure that that's going to make it down. This is going to be an Alberta clipper heading into the Great Lakes region over the next couple days. And then looking out in the Atlantic. Pretty quiet. One little lone system south of Iceland. And while we're heading east, let's take a look at Ukraine. And there's Ukraine right there. And one thing that I did notice is some of the weather data has actually come back. That's Kiev right there. They're reporting snow at this hour. And we're picking up a few more stations up to the north. And those are some of the more war-torn areas. Another area of heavy fighting is down here. And you can see the data loss from Kharkiv down to the Crimea. Looks like another Black Sea system moving through the area, that's going to pick up moisture and sling it to the northwest. So it should stay cloudy in that part of the continent. Elsewhere around to Europe, looks pretty quiet. 1025 millibar high across Germany. And there's not very much going on. And yes, we've definitely got some warmth on the East Coast. 81 degrees at Baltimore, breaking the record by 5 degrees, and some more records all the way down to Florida. For tomorrow, some moderation, except down there in Florida. And much the same situation for Wednesday. But for Thursday, starting to see some record lows in the Great Basin region. And for Friday, those cold temperatures expand eastward into Texas and Oklahoma, looking at 14 degrees in Amarillo and 17 at Stillwater, north of Oklahoma City. For Saturday, that's getting so far out that it's biased by climatology. So these suggested records and near records, that's going to be significant. Looks like a lot of cold air settling in across the southern Rockies, and those cold temperatures spread east 
This is indicating yet another hard freeze across parts of the southeastern U.S. So let's take a look at the upper levels. Major trough across the southwestern U.S., and that looks like a closed low around Grand Junction. And our other system in the eastern Rockies, that was involved in those tornadoes that we had in Iowa over the weekend. You've probably seen some of that on social media. We see extensive ridging built up into Alaska. And most of this here is going to be a long wave trough. And we've been in this configuration for probably a couple of weeks now. And if we roll that forward, you can see the ascent area moving out into Oklahoma and Texas. It is going to be decoupled from the deeper tropical moisture due to that ridging in the lower levels. So we're not going to see a whole lot of weather with that. Most of that's going to be elevated convection, mostly in this area, and some stronger lift producing extensive mid-level clouds. Then if we go into the rest of the week, just a series of troughs coming down into the base of that long wave trough. There goes another one in the southwestern U.S. That's going to be around Thursday. And then I think we're going to see that Arctic air actually on the move. That's probably going to be bound up with this troughing right here, moving into the Rockies and the Great Plains. And then as we get into next week, it looks like the upper level ridge on the west coast breaks down and we start getting a series of zonal systems moving onto the west coast. One of the more important products this time of year is precipitable water. As we get into spring, this corresponds to the moisture return from the Gulf, the source of tropical air located right down there into the Caribbean. So what we have is kind of a narrow moisture return this afternoon that's feeding the showers and storms across the Appalachians. And as that weather system moves into the Atlantic, the moisture goes along with it. However, we have not quite cleared out the moisture along the Texas and Louisiana Gulf Coast. That's going to join up with that system coming out of the Pacific. And you can see some cyclogenesis there across East Texas as it interacts with that moisture field and then moves into the Southeast states. Now, precipitable water, in a sense, is also a tracer for air mass source regions. In the northern states, we see evidence of that. This is all Canadian origin air. Meanwhile, a sliver of tropical moisture starts feeding across Oklahoma into Kansas. That's probably going to be elevated, but it does come together. And we can see those values increasing towards Thursday and Friday as the next cold front comes southward. A lot of interaction with that tropical moisture towards the weekend. However, we pretty much clean out that moisture by Saturday and Sunday. And you can see the Gulf emptying out as well. That moisture return sets back up for Sunday and Monday in time for the next system. We can sample that moisture return by dropping a sounding on that. And we can see that it does have some depth. However, it does taper with height. So it's not a particularly impressive moisture return. And that dew point that I saw was about 58. So what can we say? It looks like a classic early season succession of Pacific systems. A quick check around the country. The southwestern U.S. on the back side of that vortex, which is up there around Grand Junction. The instability reaching all the way down into the Mogollon Rim, almost to Phoenix. And as you go further west, it is mild and dry. Looks like a lot of snow on the ground in the mountains of Nevada into the Mount Shasta region. Overall, a pretty nice day. And in the northwestern U.S., also very nice, except for some fog and stratus from Seattle down to Portland. Montana, getting some downslope flow ahead of the next system coming out of Canada. That's way up off the top of the satellite image. Same thing in the Dakotas. However, a lot of snow on the ground all the way from Grand Forks down to Aberdeen and Valentine, Nebraska. There's that snow track going all the way back to Lyman, Burlington, and Colorado Springs. 
and a separate track across Topeka, Salina, and up into Des Moines. And in Texas, we've got that front off down in the corner. This is a very strong Anna front. A lot of the clouds and precip trailed back behind it, and we still got some of that in place. Stratus and Stratocumulus, Altocumulus, just north of the front, and we're going to actually see that increase as the next weather system emerges from the southern Rockies. There's a look at that frontal boundary out there in the Gulf, stretching from New Orleans down towards Brownsville. That's a arc cloud. Some storms developing along that, but the air mass in this region a little bit more capped. Tropical air is the rule in Florida. Temperature dew point spread, 83 over 66, so they are definitely in the swamp. Going up into Alabama and Georgia, we hit that frontal boundary. Looks like storms closing in on Atlanta. The Midwest region showing extensive cold air advection. That's all stratocumulus, maybe some cumulus that got some sunshine and kind of spread out beneath the cap. This is going to be around Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's what I'm talking about. That's probably more of an inversion. But that's because the maximum cold air advection is usually around five to 6,000 feet in these kinds of outbreaks. So eventually, when you get that development of cumulus, it's going to cap out and spread around five to 10,000 feet. So even though there is some instability, you get these low-topped cumulus and low-topped cumulonimbus clouds, and they're definitely more prominent in Michigan, where some heating has reached the ground and where we've had some flow over the relatively warmer waters. The mid-Atlantic coast catching a lot of mid and high clouds spreading from that frontal boundary located right there. There's the showers and storms coming out of West Virginia. Then in the northeastern U.S. we get north of that warm front which is somewhere in there. That's where isentropic lift becomes more of a factor. You get a lot of stratified stratocumulus, nimbostratus, that kind of thing. And then you get the more elevated convection, I guess you could say, out there. Ontario, western New York, and the weather is just going to continue going downhill. And no segment for today for Big Rig Steve. He's on break. So this will be a good place to close up for today. Hopefully we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Take care and have a great Monday evening. Bye-bye.